Hey everyone, how's it going? Total Level here, so it's been a while since I did any sort of pickups video or anything like that, as yeah, I'm sorry about that. The last few months I've picked up quite a few different games and everything, so yeah, I'll have to figure out how to do pickups for that. My next pickups video is probably going to be about Black Friday sales and all that once I get kind of all the games in. I think I'm pretty much done my shopping before Black Friday. Always so weird to me with that. But, since I love JRPGs, I want to kind of focus a bit more of JRPGs on my channel. I thought, why not take a look at kind of 10 PS4 and PS5 games that I bought recently that are kind of more of the niche JRPGs, right? <laughs> Ones that you may not have heard of or don't really hear anyone talk about. <laughs> now, one of these games, I'm sure, like, you have heard about and everything, but it's still don't hear too many people talk about right now, so... Yeah, with all that rambling out of the way, let's look at kind of 10 niche JRPGs I recently picked up on PS4 and PS5. So, the first game here is Trinity Trigger, so I did a little short on this, a little short unboxing, right, as, yeah, a really cool game, you know, it's inspired by games like Secret of Mana or Trials of Mana, any of those mana type games, but definitely a lot lower budget. Now, I know there's mixed things about this with people, but for me, playing it so far, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Like, it's just a nice, casual, uh, kind of hack and slash sort of JRPG, right? I'm, you know, I didn't go into this game expecting much, so, yeah, I know it's supposed to be pretty short, so I'll probably beat it sometime soon and everything like that, but, you know, for why paid and everything, like, it's pretty decent for me, I would say. So I picked up Monarch here on the PS4 at Video Games Plus, and so far, yeah, it's not too bad. It has a very interesting system with it where it's this, you know, sort of basic turn-based combat, but what's cool about it is uh, depending on how you do these battles, you're leveling up certain things, part of the seven deadly sins and everything, so depending on how much you attack, you might gain a lot of lust or whatever, and if you're healing all the time or powering yourself up, you may gain greed after the battle, things like that. It's really neat system. I'm very early on in this game though, so I can't say too much about it, but so far, early impressions are pretty solid with this one. Next, we have Blacksmith of the Sand Kingdom, so I saw this on Ren's channel, uh, <laughs> Hallowed Be Thy Game. So, yeah, just looked very interesting. <laughs> uh, not much I can say right now about it, like I played maybe 10 minutes of it, but so far, like, just the low bits is... Seems pretty cool, and yeah, just the way I saw it on his channel, it just looked really neat. So yeah, picked this up at Video Games Plus as well, as yeah, just wanted to get a physical copy of this, and yeah, looking forward to diving more into this game later on. Now we have Digimon Survive, so I've heard mixed things with this game because a lot of people say, you know, the visual novel and story are fantastic in this, but the gameplay combat is really, really bad, so... Yeah, not sure, but for me, I always like the G Digimon games. Uh, the only issue is so many of them are so long, usually, that I don't really end up beating a whole lot of them because, yeah, so many are like 50 or 100 plus hours, right? But, you know, this game was 20 bucks off Amazon and I thought, you know, why not give it a shot? Now, played a little bit, only got into one c combat scenario and everything, so I can't really judge the game right now, but it has gorgeous animation, like the visual novel style is one of the best I've seen for a visual novel, like, just beautiful art and character models and everything, so, you know, hopefully I end up enjoying this game a lot. 
Next we have Grand Kingdom, so I saw this on Amazon, the PAL version, and it looked very interesting, and yeah, I went on the PlayStation Store just to make sure, like, okay, this game doesn't have, like, big DLC or anything, right? And since it didn't, I'm like, okay, it's pretty cheap off Amazon, I'll get it in. Yeah, the little bit I played is really, really cool, one of the most unique games I've seen. It's like tactical turn-based action combat, if that makes sense. Like, it takes a while to get used to, like, the first few battles I was in, man, I sucked at this, but once you get used to it, it is really, really cool where, yeah, you have, like, these different planes going into battles, and every character has different types of attacks, and their ranges, and you have to time your attacks, like, this game may be one amazing hidden gem, so once I get through a few other games, like, I am going to dive into this one because just recording early gameplay, I was like, I want to play way more of this, so really looking forward to diving a lot more into this and probably doing like a standalone video on this game, I think. Next, we have Monochrome Mobius Rights and Wrongs Forgotten, so this is a standalone game of a different series which I'll put on screen because I have no idea how to pronounce this name. I have one game in that series, Mask of Truth, but I haven't played it because I know it's supposed to be like the third final chapter, so... I hope I can play like the first two, which I think got remastered recently or something, so hopefully I can get those at some point, though I believe they're digital, so... Early on, you know, solid game, like, uh, <laughs> you know, it just looked interesting to me, I saw some videos on it, and when I went to GameStop the other day, I saw it there, so it's like, yeah, why not, why not take a chance on it, and... Yeah, I know some people really love this game, other people were a bit more mixed with it. Graphically, nothing to write home about or anything, but combat, you know, pretty typical standard uh, turn-based RPG, right? But yeah, I'll have to dive more into it later on and see if the combat evolves a bit more because it has this ring system with gems on it where if your character passes through a gem, you get certain advantages through a battle, and so I want to see how that plays more into the game, so yeah, I have to see later on with this one. Now on to PS5 games, and we have Moto Anomaly, so I did a preview video of this game and all that, so I'll kind of go through this a bit quicker, as if you want more details on the game, check out that video, but so far, this is a pretty solid, conscious, you know, detective JRPG, right? Uh, like, it's pretty basic, and again, graphics, nothing to write home about or anything, but it has a pretty cool, just visual novel style and this comic book kind of style to it, right? And yeah, early on, first impressions are you know, not too bad, I'm very interested in kind of the story of this game because it seems like it could go into some pretty cool places and everything, so... Yeah, you know, and this was a cheap blind buy off Amazon, so... You know, not too bad for just a blind buy that I had no idea what this game was about. So, here's the game that I think most people know about, One Piece Odyssey, but still want to showcase it here, as don't hear too much about it now. <laughs> to be honest, I tried watching the anime before, but just could never get into One Piece. I do really enjoy the Netflix adaptation of the live action, that is really fun to watch, highly recommend. And the video games themselves I do really enjoy. This is actually the first physical One Piece game I got because usually I got them digitally since, you know, they were always sold for like five bucks or less on like the PlayStation stores and everything, but yeah, I wanted to get this because, you know, turn-based JRPG and things like that, so yeah, I thought this would be cool and so far, yeah, very solid game and <laughs> Looking forward to diving more into this. I might play a few other One Piece games 
first just to get more used to the characters and story because I'm not sure which part this game takes place in. <laughs> but it's a little kind of lost in like uh, some of the characters or where they were or whatever, so yeah, I'll have to play a few other One Piece games to try and fill in some of the gaps, I think, but so far, pretty cool game. Then we have the Caligula Effect Overdose, so I got this game because I, <laughs> a few months ago, I got the Kaluga Effect 2 on PS4 and was really enjoying that, so I wanted to get the first one and saw that a PS5 version was coming at some point, so yeah, I kind of waited and then, yeah, I saw a sale on Amazon for it, so yeah, I got it and, you know, very solid, uh, <laughs> game again. A lot of people like to describe these games as kind of Persona-like because it has that school setting with kind of alternate type of world and everything like that, right? But yeah, you know, uh, don't expect like Persona levels of, you know, quality or anything. Like it is definitely a budget type of game, but so far, like, it's very solid, and if you're looking for just a nice pick-up-and-play JRPG, this might do, as, yeah, it's on, like, PS4, PS5, the Switch, and PC, I believe. And the final game we have here is Eternite, so... This one was actually something I saw on the PlayStation 5 store, uh, or just PlayStation Store, and saw a trial for it, so I tried it, really enjoyed it, and saw a physical was coming just a few weeks later, kind of mid-November, right? So, like, yeah, let's try this game, especially since it was selling for $40 Canadian, and, you know, budget game, you know, graphics, again, nothing to write home about, but for a budget type game, like, I'm having a lot of fun with this one, I am pleasantly surprised. This game is described as kind of dating sim RPG, but so far I haven't gone into the dating sim aspects of very early on, but again, just having a lot of fun, the combat is really solid in this. <laughs> Takes a while to get used to, I was dying a lot early on, but once I got used to it, man, the combat just felt really, really cool, and the characters already really enjoying them, and yeah, you get these social interactions, and depending on your answers will increase certain stats of, like, courage, or uh, resiliency, or whatever, right, and so... Yeah, like, I am digging this game so far. I am pleasantly surprised. Again, I'll probably do a full-on video, maybe review on this game once I beat it, because I think this game deserves a bigger spotlight as... Yeah, of course I have to see, wait and see until I beat it to get a full impression, but early on, first impressions, really solid with this game. And so, those are my recent 10 kind of JRPG pickups on PS4, PS5 that are a bit more niche, obscure, right? So, yeah, let me know what you think about these games. Have you played any of them yourself? Let me know what you think of these games in the comments down below. Also, yeah, let me know what recent JRPGs you picked up. Like, doesn't have to be an obscure one. <laughs> like... You know, there's so many great ones, and yeah, let me know if you like this format too, I mean, <laughs> I'll probably do more of these types of videos anyways, because I just love JRPGs, but always love to hear your guys' feedback, right? So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Keep playing JRPGs. <laughs> Alright, see ya, take care, bye. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, or if you just want to see any of my skits and then nothing else and leave the video, that's fine too. <laughs> Thanks everyone, take care.